All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the live stream. It's uh, Saturday, February 25th, and I'm back in Baltimore from a trip to Dublin this past week. And nice to see all of you. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching the replay, welcome to the show. We uh, do live streams. Um, I do live streams fairly regularly, but not always too regularly. I, I need to probably work more on that. But I try to do a live stream before our premieres of videos on Saturdays. Saturday videos are our main I guess the main release is for the channel every week. And we try to uh, do, I try to do a little bit of a live stream before that to, uh, you know, to, to, to talk about the video in question and, uh, you know, to talk about whatever you might have questions about. So if you have any questions about, about the video, about the behind the scenes, or even, uh, what do you call it? Even about, um, I don't know. Now it's on. Good, Rusty. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Sorry. I'm glad you said something because I did not know that at the time. And the, the problem with YouTube is that once you've gone past a certain setting on live streams through YouTube itself, it doesn't allow you to go back and like make changes. So for example, it's set to receive audio from another, another panel, which I just missed when I was setting it up because I was setting up pretty quickly this morning and well, there it is. I just couldn't get the audio through. And so you just kind of were, were, were kind of stuck on that. But now we, we should be good. So like I was saying, so the, today's video is uh, about, about called, uh, today's video is from a place called Patuje in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And it's in this Pinheiros neighborhood, which is, I guess, kind of like their hip, cool area. And how we came across it was because I, I'd asked one of my friends, Danilo, uh, Danilo Lodi about, hey, man, where should I go look for coffee in Brazil, in Sao Paulo? And I was like, so for me, it's like it when we're looking for places to visit, and it's not necessarily places to shoot, just places for me to visit. It's really about I'm looking for places that that are unique, that have a unique voice or vision or perhaps the person that's leading the, the shop is very interesting. It, I guess that's the best way to put it. Someone that has, that's really heavily focused on what they want to do and, and will pursue that folk vision regardless of, regardless of whatever that, whatever everybody else is doing. And so, you know, you can go to a city and you can find great coffee nowadays. Like you can find a specialty coffee shop in almost any city in the world and there'll be great coffee there. Like, but you know, to be honest with you, it's getting kind of boring, getting kind of boring for me personally, it's getting kind of boring. Like I, I was just in Dublin and I asked a friend of mine, I said, Hey, where should we, where should I go find coffee? Like, and I told him the same criteria and there was one place we went to and it was very good. It was great. It was a great time. And so I really enjoyed that. But you know, if, if, you, if I just go to a place that's, you know, making nice coffee, you know, pretty much like everybody else, it's not terribly exciting. But anyway, this place, Patuhe caught my attention because they call it Patuhe Kisaten. And, I'm really a fan of Japanese style kisatens, and I like to visit them when I'm in Japan. And I've been studying, you know, kind of like what they do, because I think there's a lot of stuff we can export from their world into ours. And so the name just caught my eye. And it turns out that the the couple that own it, well, one of the, the wife is is actually like Brazilian Japanese, and the other guy, the husband, is Brazilian Brazilian. And they got together and decided they went on a tour of, of Asia, Seoul, Japan, and they just fell in love with, you know, different concepts. And they, they decided to create their own concept. And we went there. It's a very like uh, OSB kind of industrial, like it, the, the design of the place is very reminiscent of what we were doing in like 2004, that old, that like a lot of, you know, concrete OSB type of plywood, some steel. Still cool, but, you know, uh, I thought a little bit, personally, I thought it was a little bit outdated, but whatever the case, we were there for it. And then we ended up going, sitting at the bar with this barista by the name of Luna. And you will, you'll see in the video, she's really, really, really interesting and really a great ambassador for their company. And that's what we were doing there. And so the video is about that and our experience there. And hopefully you'll find a, a good flavor from it. Now, well, I was just in Dublin this past week, so I left on Saturday, last Saturday in the, in the evening, flew to Dublin, 
and was there until yesterday, flew back from Dublin and uh, was there for their barista and latte art championships where we did judges training and then held the competitions at the catering expo that was being held at the RDS Center in Dublin. Really nice time. There was It was really relatively small, so only seven competitors for barista, eight competitors for the latte art. And I think we came up with some good champions that are going to be heading to Athens and I think also to Taipei for the world championships. And Rusty says, how was the average breakfast? Renew your Lipitor meds. You know, I was thinking about that. Like, I was previously in Dublin in 2016 for the World Barista Championship. And I went out to eat. And, and during that trip, I was staying at an Airbnb. Really, really cheap. Really, really basic. You know, there was breakfast there. I, I believe there was breakfast. Maybe like toast and something like that. Just basic, perfunctory breakfast to get you on the road to get out the door. And one day I did go out to a restaurant and have the full Irish breakfast with the uh, with eggs and the beans and the tomato and the, the I guess they had mushrooms too or whatever and the blood sausage. I like the blood sausage. The beans and the tomato and the mushrooms to me are just weird to have in a, for breakfast. And I had it, something similar to it in London in previous trips as well. And, and I just wasn't, I just, I just wasn't grooving with those things. But at the hotel they put me up in for this trip is a place called the Clayton Hotel. Relatively nice hotel. Nice breakfast spread, like wide breakfast spread. And and they had on the hotline all the components you need to make a proper English, uh, to, to make a proper Irish breakfast. So scrambled eggs, toast, what else? Blood sausage, the other type of oat kind of sausage, white sausage, I think they call it Irish sausage. Uh, they had the tomatoes, the beans, mushrooms, and bacon rashers, which is kind of like a thicker cut ham. And I kind of ate almost that full entire Irish breakfast pretty much every day for the last four days. And it was actually, I got to enjoy it. I got to enjoy it. I got to say, I didn't put a lot of beans and or a lot of one tomato, but I did, I did get to enjoy it. I do like the... I do find myself liking blood sausage. So, yeah, not bad, not bad. But anyway, so I was able to get a, a glass from Guinness. I did not go to the Guinness experience this time. I went there in 2016, and you know what? It's cool. Once is enough. I don't really, unless I need to tour someone with me. It was. It's fun, don't get me wrong. And then you go After the tour, you go to the top of the building, and there's this drinking center where it overlooks the city in 360 degree views. Wonderful time. But you can get a pint and get a, a good one pretty much anywhere in Dublin. And so I got finally got a glass. Actually, I had gotten one in 2016. And then on my trip that time, I flew out to London after and was visiting with my cousin, and she promptly kept the glass. So I was out of my glass. So one of the things I had to get on this trip was a glass. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much the trip there. We got I got some videos we shot. We shot at a place called Brew Lab, which is a brand new coffee company or a coffee shop in the center city of Dublin. It's um, oh, Rusty says so. You got your certificate? No, I did not get my certificate. Or <laughs> I was watching them though. So you you pull the tap. I was watching this one guy and he pulled the tap. And then he brings it to about here. Or maybe there's a line here. Maybe, or maybe you use this as a reference. I don't know. I don't, I was paying attention, but I wasn't paying that close of the detail, but probably to about there. And then you let the, the foam rise. And then he hit it again until it reached the top. Now he did not, the, the place that I went to did not do the shamrock. I might have to go buy some Guinness today and play with that. Although I did hear, remember you hearing years ago that this is probably in the nineties when, when Guinness first started, I guess, putting it into bottles and they had some kind of nitrogen charger or something inside the bottle that it was, it was not designed to pour into a glass, but it was then designed to be drink straight from the bottle. I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah, that was kind of what we were, that was kind of what we were doing. It was good. I went to a comedy show this, uh, 
this this, this friend of mine that I met, she uh, I wanted to go. She asked me to come with her to a comedy show, and so I, I went and joined them. Had a nice time down in the center city, and uh, oh, back to the coffee thing. And uh, we went to this place called Brew Lab. Very nice place, really well done. Husband and wife team, actually husband and wife competitive team. So they both have competed in multiple competitions. Brewer's Cup, Latte Art, Barista, Cup Tasters. And they have placed as well as won their national championships. So very, very accomplished in, in that in those terms and really well designed place. Like it was it was really a great place to visit. It really well designed, great coffees, really well done. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I was shot, I did shoot a video there, so that will be coming out in the, in the coming weeks. I did not shoot too much video. I did shoot a video about the, I did, I did shoot footage at the Latte Art Championship. And, oh, Darcy says the nitro charger is in the, in the can, not the bottle. Okay, good. thanks, thanks, thanks. So that's meant to be drank out of the straight out of the can, right? That, rather than the bottle. I guess I'll go buy the bottle then. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, the uh, I'm, pl I'm planning to put together a video about the Latte Art Championship, not necessarily about that specific Irish Latte Art Championship, but more of a video kind of like the uh, the Cup Tasters video that we shot in Saudi Arabia, where it's really more about giving basic and general information so that people can have a better appreciation understanding of the latte art championship so shot a bit of footage there and didn't really shoot anything of the barista championship because we've got plenty of barista championship coverage already and also that are in the works but another thing that what else has been happening oh i did get a uh, as we move as we move into 2022, th three, three. God. Sorry, I'm a little, I guess I'm a little bit jet lagged. I decided to, we, we got some, I decided to get another camera. So this is a, this is a, a camera that I picked up right before we left for, before I left for uh, Dublin. Like actually I bought it, I think the day before, or two days before. This is the Sony FX30 and it's a, a digital cinema camera that we've been, uh, that I just picked up. And we've been using this one camera called the Sony ZV-1, which is a smaller, very, very compact camera. And we've shot pretty much everything on the channel. I'd say about 90, probably about 95% of what you've seen on the channel is through the ZV-1. Actually, it's what I'm using for the live stream at the moment. This one has a bigger sensor and just a, little, a lot more capability as far as flexibility for shooting interchangeable lenses, better quality, well, better quality audio recording. It doesn't necessarily mean the audio is going to be much better. Like, for example, that's a great uh, a, a thing that I wanted to mention. It's like the Pato Hay video that you're going to be watching this morning is one that was actually very difficult in post-production because they played a lot of loud music in the space. And a lot of it was just kind of, I guess, hipstery kind of music really... Uh, the tonality was very much in the same range as the spoken voice. And when I started editing the video several months ago, probably about six months ago, it's just so noisy. There's just so much noise around it. And I did a test cut of it back then. And there, because of the music that they're playing in the background, there was a lot of copyright infringement problems with the video. So... I try. I recut the video and, and cut it in a way so that we would really truncate the music that you hear in the background, and that limited the amount of th that. Pretty much eliminated the copyright problems. However, the the problem then became that it would just kind of felt a bit choppy, and it just sounded kind of messed up. Like the background noise was always like jumping around. I was trying to clean it up with a, a an application called um, Isotope. And Isotope worked decently, but Isotope requires you to export and then re-import the, 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 the audio tracks, which just adds another layer of complexity and, and issues. And however, recently, within the last like month or so, the company called Blackmagic Design, who does a, an, a, so, um, an editing application called DaVinci Resolve, which is what we've been mainly, what I mainly use is DaVinci Resolve. And they just came out with a new audio processing 
module for their software that basically what they call voice isolation and it works really well. So we were able to isolate. So I was able to isolate the audio and it's not, it doesn't have the, the, the deep tonality that you'd like to have in a, in a regular audio recording for voice, but it, it does eliminate all the extraneous noise, which really, which really cleaned up the video a lot. Now, I'm, to be honest with you, when you're, when you're watching it, there's a, there is a lot of soundtrack music to the, to the, to the video. Some of that was used to help cover up that strange, like silent background because it's, you you might be able to pick it up now, now that I'm telling you you might be able to pick it up on the actual release video but I think it it turned out well I, I think it turned out pretty nicely and I'm rather pleased with it so yeah there it is so as we, but back to the camera so as we go forward I'm probably gonna be using this more to shoot with although you know it compared to the ZV1 this is a much larger camera physically and depending on how you set it up it could become even bigger and so for me it's like I really enjoy a lot of run and gun type of shooting. Like we're, when we're in the cafes, the, C, the ZV-1, which is a much smaller camera, is just so much more conducive to run and gun and kind of get, kind of getting in your face, but without, you know, I, I'll shoot some of it just kind of like this while talking and engaging with our subject. This is a lot larger. So, and now with this microphone on, it's kind of this, you've got a microphone in your face. So I don't know how well that's going to work, but, you know, we got to work with it and figure out how to use it and how to optimize it. But those are just some of the things that I'm, I'm thinking about as we move forward, as, as far as being concerned, is how this will impact the way we shoot. And, you know, because it's a bigger camera, too, like it attracts more attention. And so one of the nice things about the ZV-1 is that I, I'm shooting in, like, a lot of public spaces, so it doesn't necessarily attract a lot of attention where this will undoubtedly attract a little bit more but yeah that's about it i guess so if you have any questions drop them in the comments down below um just some thoughts on today's video it's um what else do i need to tell you about it what else can we talk about here yeah pato hey also when you look at the listing in the, in the description of the video it says pato ray like english speaking would be like pato ray Turns out that in Portuguese, or at least in Brazil, Portuguese, the R's are pronounced like H's. Like we would say hotel or hotel. Oh, yeah, hotel. Pato, yeah, hotel. Pato Hey instead of Pato Rey. But it's a really nice shop that's, I think, worth worth checking out. And I did put uh, chapter stops here so that it'd be easier if you, after you watch the video, you'll be able to jump around and see you know, go to whatever whatever spot might be interesting for you. And we shot this back in uh, January, uh, June 2022. So it's been a good six, seven months since we shot the video. It didn't take necessarily that long. A lot of times we've got a lot of videos that are in the queue that are just, um, you know, I've shot a lot of video over the last year and trying to get all of that video edited is the, is always the challenge. So there it is. Thanks for watching this morning. Good to see all of you. And uh, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments down below, If you're especially if you're watching on the replay. And uh, be sure to check out the video, today's premiere, uh, about Patuhe Kisaten in Sao Paulo. Links will be down below when I do all the descriptions. And uh, if you're watching us live, we're going to get off now so that you can get ready for the actual premiere. All right, so thanks for tuning in, and uh, see you guys next time. Have a great one.